Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Peace. Today's video is all about how to identify your target customer. I have really come to learn over time that not only is it the most important aspect of having a successful marketing strategy, it is probably one of the most underrated steps. And I think it's because a lot of people get really put off with the idea of identifying the target customer and quote unquote excluding people. And also until you start getting a bit more advanced with your marketing, it's easy to see why you might see that step as kind of like a nice to have because if for example the only way you choose to market your business is through social media a you're not paying so you have more to lose by just kind of speaking to everyone and b you're not really forced to target any specific type of customers the way you are when you start doing paid advertising but honestly whether you're using paid or organic methods which you should be using both it is genuinely so so important that you know your target customer regardless because if you're talking to everyone then you're talking to no one so the first step is sitting down and defining them in detail it shouldn't be a fine 10 minute activity this should be something that takes you hours and it's something that you're going to continue to tweak over time as you learn more and more about your audience and who your product is able to serve best and who you as the founder as the visionary want to target and want to serve best this person is an evolving human being and you need to continually spend intentional dedicated time defining this person to a t this can be anything from their demographics or things like how old are they where do they live how much do they earn, to their psychographics, which is more about them as a person, what are their likes, dislikes, their fears, what do they want to achieve the most in life, what is a typical day in their life like, you want to think about what other brands they shop with, you want to think about their pain points, you want to know about their buying behaviour, are they the type of person to shop online a lot, when they do make a buying decision, where do they go to get information, are they impulse buyers? Are they someone who likes to invest a bit more in a product and, and think about it for a bit longer and splurge? And this is so important because everything you do comes back to this. Your product development comes back to this because you're going to come up with a product line that will serve this person based on their biggest pain point, based on their biggest desire, based on what is most important to them. For your marketing strategy, you need to know what this person likes, how they speak, what resonates with them, what, what kind of social media influencers do they watch, what kind of content do they consume, what do they do in their spare time, and you're going to make sure that your marketing strategy speaks to that person and, and talks about the things that are important or relevant to them. Even your customer retention strategy, what does that specific person need to keep them coming back to us? Everything you do comes back to this person, which is why it's so, so important to define them. And if you don't define them, you're going to find that your marketing strategy is speaking to one person. Your product development is speaking to another person. Your customer retention strategy is speaking to another person. And everything is just kind of all over the place. And also at this stage, if you already have started your business and have an existing audience, you will want to use what you know about this audience to answer some of the questions from step one. So you should do a survey to your existing audience to identify any gaps from step one. You're using this survey opportunity to get data on any questions you can't answer. So it's also useful to ask things like how did they hear about you or what made them shop with you. Those are things that will also still help you identify your target customer. So just ask as many relevant questions as possible, but don't make it too long. Make it easy to answer. Make it multiple choice or yes or no or drop down questions as much as possible. You don't want to be asking people to just answer like an essay. And now you have some sort of idea on who this person is, you're going to need to do some social media digging, which I know you've done before. So let's put those skills to, to better use, let's say. So now you have some sort of idea as the kind of person that will fall in this target customer pool. You can look at their social media accounts and look at what kind of brands they follow. Look at what other similar accounts come up. Look at what brands they interact with or shop with, especially if it's a brand that they're posting on their social media or tagging in their social media. That means they're quite proud to shop with them or they're a very engaged customer. So that's really useful data to know. So you can use this to see what they do in their spare time. You can see what products they use often. Just use this digging stage to get more ideas, more data, more clarity on the information that you found from steps one and two. And now you have more ideas of the person. You then want to look at products they use often and look at things like reviews or comments under social media. So if, for example, my target customer was a millennial girl who really liked luxury spending and she really liked designer handbags, maybe a Chanel bag, then I would find an influencer that appeals to that person that's done a review on a Chanel bag and I'll look at the comments and see what kind of comments that person said about the bag. So they might say something like, I really want that bag, but I need something that's big enough to take on holiday. So you might know that, okay, this type of person is a type that is going to make a buying decision based off of being able to use it for different occasions. This is literally the level of detail you're going to have to get to. Like really doing the research to understand what people's biggest wants and needs are and what their biggest objections are when it comes to a certain product. And you can do this for all the products that you've been able to identify that your target customer uses often. This is all about shaping the customer avatar that you've been able to identify that 
that your product will serve best. And now the final step is knowing where to actually find them. Now you've identified your target customer, you've got your product, how do you actually put your product in front of these people? But there's really no magic trick here. It's just your job now to put your brand in the places that they hang out, which you should have been able to identify from the steps you've done before. You need to make sure that you present your brand, you present your product in a way that shows them that this is what they need. This is what they need to overcome their objections or their pain points. This is what they've been looking for, even if they didn't know that they've been looking for it. And yeah, just presenting your brand in a way that's compelling enough or gives them enough reason to at least learn more. And for the most part, across your different marketing strategies, the way that you will speak to them, the way that you can present your brand in a way that will resonate with them will be either through your visuals or your copywriting. So for example, you can be selling a push chair and this push chair is really practical, but it also looks really nice. If your target customer is a new mum, then you're going to want to speak more about and have visuals or a video that shows a lot more about how easy it is to fold, how easy it is to push, I don't know. Um, just showing the practicality of it will speak more to the new mum. Whereas if your target customer was a mum who was more about the Instagrammable side of motherhood and kind of showing off all their cool accessories, then you would want to have visuals and copywriting that speaks more of the style aspect of the prime. So one person's greatest desire for the prime is practicality and the other one is style. And you can have the same product and speak to two different people just by what you're showing and what you're speaking about in your marketing. As a bonus tip, this is really underrated and not many people speak about this, but you should also think about your unideal customer. Who do you absolutely not want to attract to your business? So you would also want to identify this customer so that you can make sure that you repel them in your marketing. For example, for someone who has a luxury or premium brand, you wouldn't want to have the type of person that's always looking for discount codes before they shop. So you would also want to identify that person and think about what kind of things you can put in your marketing to make sure that they're put off straight away because especially when it comes to paid ads you want to be repelling customers that the product isn't for because like in that example i just gave if your paid ads aren't repelling the people that the product isn't for then people will just start clicking on it and you get charged per click if something is absolutely not for a particular type of person you would also want to make that obvious especially in your paid marketing so thank you so so much for watching i really hope you found that useful please let me know if you have any comments or questions and don't forget to like and subscribe and i will see you again very soon bye